Hello, and today we're introducing our new saga dedicated to uh, watchmaking tourism in Switzerland. We're going to show you the main regions where it's all happening and we're starting with Geneva. The reason why I'm standing in front of Geneva's cathedral is that religion has played a major role in the development of watchmaking in Switzerland and in Geneva in particular. In the 16th and 17th century, Europe was largely devastated by wars and those were mostly driven by religious matters. France had to wait 1598 for Protestants to be formally tolerated in the society, which didn't mean that they could do whatever they wanted. For instance, they could not act as doctors or lawyers, so most of them went into craftsmanship, meaning jewelry and watchmaking. Under Louis XIV, this uh, decree, the Edit de Nantes, was revoked, which meant that most of the Protestants had to flee the country. Some of them went to the United States, and some of them came to Geneva, which was already a Protestant stronghold. These people came with their skills and crafts, but jewellery here was perceived as something ostentatious, so all people that had jewellery craftsmanship shifted to watchmaking. We're in the middle of the old town of Geneva and it's a lovely little walk to go through it, but watchmakers, or établisseurs as we used to call them at the time, were mainly located in the Saint-Gervais district. They needed to be close by the river to benefit from the hydraulic power required to fuel up their machines. As you may know, Switzerland is a neutral country and this kind of summarizes our military arsenal. Well, kind of. Behind me is the wall of the reformers that kind of cements the role and the importance of the Protestant church here in Geneva. And this is the Opera House, which hosts once a year the Oscars of watchmaking, the famous GPHG. Despite being the capital of watchmaking, Geneva doesn't have a public watchmaking museum. It got robbed some 15 years ago and nothing has gone through since then. But you have the Patek Philippe Museum, which will host one of the most fantastic private collection of watches in the world. Today, watch brands and their manufacturers have all left the center of Geneva and they're more or less all established in the commune of Plan les Watt, which among ourselves we call Plan les Watch. But tonight is a special night. Well, yes, tonight is a special night because all the brands and their boutiques are partnered with a local winemaker and opened up their boutique for the public to come and enjoy the latest collection. One can feel intimidated by the boutiques in this street sometimes, but tonight it's open house. Over the last 10 years, this street has seriously evolved and all major watchmakers and also independent ones have established their own boutiques. This has kind of killed the multi-brand stores, but obviously for the brands, it's a further extension of their brand identity and environment and universe. People really love the Geneva flower clock. I don't really know why, but that's the way it is. Geneva also hosts all the major auction houses, and twice a year, in spring and in fall, you will have important watch auctions. And last year, for instance, that's where Sotheby's sold the incredible Patek Grave Super Complication for an astonishing $24 million, a prize that will not be beaten for a long time, I think. So if you come to Geneva, we also invite you to go through the Geneva Watch Tour. It's a nice little walk that will show you the main watchmaking highlights of the city. Soon on this saga, we'll talk about La Vallée de Joux, then La Chaux de Fonds, then Peel, and finally, we'll take you to the middle of the Swiss Alps. So enjoy the show. Yeah. 